scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God and doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves do not wither and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There is no limit to what your life can become when you desire to submit not only to the Lordship of the Spirit but to the wisdom of God. When you make up your mind that I am a surrendered vessel, I hope you realize that at the point of salvation, you are not really giving Jesus your life. You are receiving his life. Giving Jesus your life is the condition to be used by God, not just the condition to be saved. I know we say generally, I give you my life. But from a biblical standpoint, at the point of salvation, you are not giving Jesus your life. There is something wrong with that life before that time. So what you are doing is you are receiving his life into your spirit. But it is required that you give him your life so that you can be used. He said, I beseech thee, brethren, by the message of God, that ye offer your bodies unto God a living sacrifice holy and acceptable he calls it your reasonable act of worship hallelujah praise the name of the lord so when you hear songs like this they were written with intelligence it's not just to entertain you it's to provoke something within your spirit whilst it is true that no eye has seen the bible declares no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of man that which god has in store not for everybody not even for everybody who is saved for them that love him it takes a lot to demonstrate your love for jesus It's beyond mere words It's beyond saying i love you hallelujah love must be backed up by genuine desire it must be backed up by the willingness to surrender everything. Hallelujah. You have come tonight to be changed, to be imparted. As I sat back there just listening to the testimonies, I kept wondering, I said, Lord, grant your people the grace to believe that you don't play games with men. Grant your people grace for someone, maybe for the first time in your life, to really take God seriously. Hallelujah. I love, I love, I love your presence, I love, I love, I love your presence, I love Sing it one more time. See?
place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of his wings and then it begins to list a number of possibilities that happen to your life by reason of that state I will say of the Lord he is my refuge and my fortress my God in him will I trust I'm praying that among the many things that happen to you that God will show you the value of his presence. God will show you the value of remaining in his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ, that everything that distracts you away from his presence is distracting you from a life of greatness, grace, and nobility and power. You have no idea what can happen to you when you become formed in his presence. The rod of Aaron without a root, but in the presence of God, it began to bud supernaturally. No plant brings forth branches and fruits out of its connection or outside of its connection to the earth. But the presence of God made that happen over the rod of Aaron. Hallelujah. The life of the overcomer is derived from the depth of your relationship, your value for God's presence, your value for God's glory. And I pray that God will help us tonight, that he will turn our lives into signs and wonders. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Welcome to Koinonia. Please be seated. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because among the many things that happen in the house of the Lord is that he will teach us his ways. Hallelujah. They will tell one another, come let us go to the house of the Lord, the mount of the God of Jacob, for he will teach us his ways. Just one quick announcement to emphasize, this is particularly for the workers that our retreat, um, as you have been told, is coming up this Saturday. So all workers, please know that our retreat for the second half of the year is coming up this Saturday, 9 a.m. prompt. The venue will be right here at the basement. Um, all heads of department, please do well to remind your workers. It will be a time of prayer. It will be a time of fasting, pressing into the things of God, and then time to build capacity for the remaining part of the year. May the Lord grant us grace in Jesus' matchless name. Hallelujah. And then it's not too early to just express my deep and profound gratitude, especially to our family in the U.S. and Canada. The response after our last announcement has been nothing short of phenomenal. It's been very humbling, um, what you have done, the participation, the passion. I want to say a big thank you to all of you. We do these things because we love Jesus. We have no ambition in ourselves and of ourselves outside of the revelation of Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to see him revealed and the Lord will grant us that grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Are you ready for tonight? Every time you come to the house of God, you must come expectant and come happy. When I was watching our precious people, the worship team lead us in worship, I just kept nodding my head and I was praying a prayer from the depth of my heart that God will bless every one of these people. You have no idea the depth of sacrifice, what these people 
do every week the songs they write dotting the i's crossing the t's and all that is to make the atmosphere the assignment of the worship team in this house is to create the atmosphere for the manifested presence of god to find expression and if anything happens that is short of this then they failed in the assignment and we thank them for delivering and even exceeding expectations let's give them a big god bless you for their love and their labor hallelujah and so we'll be starting a two-part series tonight and it'll be this week and next week and as always god is going to be sharpening us and helping us to be greater furnished even unto good works and for all who are connecting across the globe you're welcome call everybody you know around you and ask them to come and sit down and listen for the wisdom of the spirit we're about to explore the word of god and tonight's teaching is one that will position us to be more effective to be greater tools even in the hand of god hallelujah as we see his power and his glory move from nation to nation from continent to continent just being excited about god what god is doing is not enough we must learn to position ourselves and to find out what role would you have me play this is why i was so blessed by the administration that you have a purpose you have a destiny for me to fulfill and as for me i will spend my life to see jesus revealed and jesus glorified i think you should learn that song i think that song should be put online for people to learn and sing and sing it as a prayer of consecration and devotion i have taught you that consecration is twofold number one abstinence from number two devotion unto you must capture these two dimensions of consecration in your christian experience abstinence from then devotion unto if the only thing you know is abstinence from what do you do with the time and the life are we together abstinence from then devotion unto hallelujah so I'm teaching on um, a topic that I title Greater Works, Part 1. Greater Works, Part 1. Greater Works, Part 1. Hallelujah. Jesus, we lift up your name. 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 Through our lives. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. One more time. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. In this house. Jesus, we lift up your name. Jesus, we lift up your name. I can tell you one big secret behind the hand of God upon our lives and this ministry is that in truth we have no agenda whatsoever to glorify and reveal self the singular pursuit in its entirety through all of our programs and all that we do is to present Jesus the living Christ the glorified King to the nations and to do that unashamedly and to do that without confusion when that becomes a theme and the template of your life there is no limit to how far God is able to use you you have heard me say that the Lord told me years ago that if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you the mundane things that we chase in futility can only be found not by seeking them but by living a truly surrendered life you will lay up gold as dust. 
you will access wisdom beyond your imagination he will take you light years ahead of your contemporaries when you die indeed and your entire agenda becomes to see him revealed many times we try to use jesus this is the reason why we're never able to get the best of god we want to use him to build a destiny defined by ourselves and on our own terms many times we want to use him to get fame we want to use him as a ladder to ascend heights and take away the feeling of feeling of of being failures and those things are too small a reason when your life is bent on being spent to see jesus revealed then there is absolutely nothing he cannot do in and through your life a very simple concept but it's easier said than done because exalting Jesus will demand that you consciously die to yourself, die to your ambitions. Dying to your agenda is not folding them away, is dethroning them and exalting the Christ and his purposes above them. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Greater Works, Part 1. God desires that across the nations of the earth, including our nation, that there be a display and a manifestation of the power and the glory of God once again. There have been prophecies from scripture and even from patriarchs, fathers of faith, who are now part of the cloud of witnesses, that before Jesus Christ returns, there will once again be a wave of the spirit, a move of the spirit across the globe history is full of people who left these prophetic words some of them as their final words to the earth as they transited and thankfully some of them their words were captured thanks to technology and preserved for our generation and even the generation to come that many of them told us that as much as we saw God use them that that was not the best yet that they were still greater manifestations of the power of God hallelujah the Spirit of God is moving across the earth, from Africa to Europe to America, across the continents of the earth, stirring a heart, a fire revival that we will see the global harvest like never before. We will see transformation territories that will be brought in subjection to Christ and some of them it will happen in one moment, shorter and sooner than we think would happen. And this is even by the Spirit of God. So God desires that before Jesus returns, there be a manifestation of the power and of the glory of God once again upon the earth. And this is very, very important. Very, very important. You must believe this. Let's go to our text for tonight, John chapter 14 and verse 12. Jesus is speaking and he makes a very profound statement. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, he says, the works that I do, he shall he do also, and greater works than this shall he do. Why? because i go on to my father i want you to look at this statement very carefully do not assume you understand it i say unto you this is jesus speaking the way and the truth the works that i do all of the supernatural manifestations and everything you saw me do whilst on earth it says you shall do and greater works than this for many years i studied this scripture and it disturbed me because in my mind I thought, what could anybody do that would be greater than what Jesus has done? Hallelujah. The word incarnate, we're talking about, not an angel, not some prophet somewhere. Jesus himself makes a very serious statement that he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall also do. And then he says, greater works, greater works than these that you see shall you do. And the reason is because I go unto my Father. Hallelujah. For our discussion tonight, I want to start by giving us three reasons why we should believe in the concept of greater works. There are three reasons that I want to point out why every believer must believe for a certainty 
that before Jesus returns, this greater work agenda is doable and will be achieved in the world of men. Number one, the first reason why you should believe in the concept of greater works is that Jesus himself said so. The very first reason why we must believe that it is possible to walk and live the reality of greater works is that Jesus himself said so. Numbers chapter 23, please, and verse 19. Jesus as God said so. And the Bible tells us here without confusion that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? So we know for a certainty that because this came out of the lips of Jesus himself, this agenda will not fail. This agenda will not be aborted. This agenda will not be lost. That greater works than these shall you do. Number two, why should we believe as believers, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that before Jesus returns, there will be a manifestation of greater works. Number two, the believer has been given, I, I wrote here, authority through Christ. We have authority today through Christ Jesus. That has positioned us to a realm where we are able to manifest greater works. The believer has been given authority today through Christ. Four scriptures very quickly. In Matthew chapter 28 from verse 18 to 20. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Jesus came and spake unto them saying, All power, New King James I believe would translate it to authority, has been given unto me in heaven and in the earth. Verse 19 says, Go ye therefore. Go with this consciousness that all authority in heaven and the earth has been given to me. It says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, it says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And whilst you do this, have this consciousness that lo, I am with you all way, even to the end of the world. Why should we believe in the concept of greater works? Jesus has been exalted and the believer through Christ has been given access to authority. In Luke chapter 10 and verse 19, Luke 10, 19, New King James, please. Luke 10, 19, he says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I give you, I give you authorities, the Greek word exousia, the capacity to legislate on my behalf. I give you authority to trample upon serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Listen to me. It is important for you to understand that the very authority that was conferred upon Jesus is what he gave the church. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6, we can go back to KJV. Ephesians 2 and verse 6, the Pauline epistle now. The Bible says, Paul speaking, and had raised us up. We have discussed this in previous teachings. Raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. The Bible declares that every believer in Christ has been raised up with Christ and we have been made to sit together. Very simple elementary concept, but it contains such profound power if and when understood. He has raised us up. And when you back down to Ephesians chapter 1, it lists the implication, all the things that we have been raised above. And it talks about thrones, principalities, powers, thrones, dominions, and every name that is named not only in this world, but even in the world that is to come. The second reason why we must believe in the concept of greater works. Number three, what is the third reason why we must believe in the concept of greater works the bible tells us that we have access to the spirit of god on account 
of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Every believer today has access to the Spirit of God. The presence of the Holy Spirit in us and with us is our guarantee that we are able to walk greater work. Acts 1 and verse 8, it says, Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. Are we together? The capacity to be witnesses is predicated upon the coming, the presence, the remaining of the Holy Spirit. This Acts chapter 1 verse 8, officially Acts chapter 2, began what we call the dispensation of the Spirit. In the Old Testament, it was God for us. While Jesus walked upon the earth, it was God with us, Emmanuel. And from Acts chapter 2 until Jesus returns, it is the dispensation of the Holy Spirit, God in us. Jesus said, he shall be with you and then shall be in you. The presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer and backing that believer up is a guarantee and the surety, the confidence, the basis of our believing that such a concept is not just a figment of man's imagination, not just some parable somewhere, but God's desire and intent and will happen before Jesus returns. Acts 10, 38, Peter speaking in the house of Cornelius. He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth even Jesus, the son of the living God, was anointed with the Holy Ghost and then anointed with power. And the Bible says he went about doing good. Remember when he walked upon the earth, the men in those days testified that they had never seen it in this fashion. Remember that these were people who had honor to history. They had heard about the things that Elijah did. They had heard about the wonderful manifestations of the Spirit. They heard about the mighty hand of God, the works of God in the life of the Israelites in Egypt. But when Jesus showed up, they saw a dimension of the hand of God, his teachings, and the demonstration of the Spirit in his life was phenomenal. They testified that they had not seen it in this fashion. And the Bible tells us, Paul speaking, that he went about doing good, healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for the simple reason that God, God, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, was with him. So with these three reasons, it's important for us to be convinced beyond any shadow of doubt that God's idea about greater works is true. And you must position yourself by faith that I will be part of those that God will use in this end time to birth this greater work agenda. If you believe that, shout a believing amen. amen. The second thing I want to discuss is the controversial word greater. For many years, it troubled me until the Lord gave me light in this scripture. And for many believers, there have been all kinds of theological debates as to whether he meant greater. Most people would say it was a, some figurative statement. Why would Jesus say greater works than these? It was as though he was demeaning himself. It was as though he was expressing some form of limitation. And you would not imagine that the son of the living God, God incarnate, will speak as though he were limited. So what was his idea about greater? It's important and I trust God that together we will solve this problem once and for all. This is the value and the benefit of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. The Bible says he will guide you into all truth. If the Holy Spirit does not open your eyes to see, you will only end up getting confused the more you study scripture. Hallelujah. I asked God this and he answered me in a very profound way. And I want to give you directly the answer that God gave me. I said, Lord, why would you say that greater works? What does that mean? Greater works than what Jesus did? Whereas the Bible already told us in Acts chapter 20 and verse 30 that there were many other miracles that Jesus did which were not documented in this book, John 20, 30. That many other miracles did Jesus which were not documented in this book. It says 31, but these are written 
that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that in believing you might have life through his name. So we know for a fact that there were many other miracles Jesus did. Only God knows what other phenomenal miracles he did. Yet in the, with the awareness of the miracles he did that we do not even know, he said, greater works than this shall you do. Let me tell you for a fact that if Jesus said greater, he really meant greater. Hallelujah. It's only that our idea of greater is what needs to be probed and edited in light of scripture. But if Jesus said greater, he was not missing words. He meant greater. So journey with me through scripture as we explore the implication of this word greater. Why would Jesus use the word greater? Was it that he was limited? Is it true that he was limited? The Bible tells us for a fact that there were certain miracles that Jesus could not perform and it does not credit it to the limitation of his ability. It credits it to the unbelief of the people. And yet Jesus seems to be expressing limitation, perhaps for the first time, that there is something you will do that I could not do. Two reasons. Number one, the first reason why Jesus used the word greater to express what the saints would do. Listen to this. While Jesus walked upon the earth, he largely did all that he did alone. While Jesus walked upon the earth, he largely did all that he did alone. But today, all believers can carry out this mandate and have access to the Spirit, bringing greater efficiency. So when Jesus says greater works, he also meant greater efficiency because while I walked upon the earth, I was the only one who had the spirit without measure to the degree that empowered me to do what I was doing. Now, every believer in Christ can have access to this spirit. Are we together now? When Jesus walked upon the earth, if he was in Nazareth, he could not be in Caesarea Philippi at the same time. Jesus himself revealed that he was limited and oftentimes he would say, let us go over to the other side. As God, he had the ability to be omnipresent, the word being everywhere. But while he was trapped in a human material body, he could not be everywhere. So when he says greater works, it is greater works because of greater efficiency. Number one, as a result of the widespread distribution of the Spirit of God, that it will no longer be trapped in a single individual, but that all believers, according to the prophecy of Joel, are we together? That I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and so on and so forth. Your young men will see visions. The first reason why that statement is true and why he used the word greater is that while he walked upon the earth, he largely did all he did alone. And the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 12 and verse 24, Acts chapter 12 and verse 24, except, sorry, John, John 12, 24, please. My apologies, John 12, 24. Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, the Bible says it abided alone. But if it die, it can bring forth much fruit. That means if you hold a grain or two of corn, you can eat it, it can't feed a family, it cannot even eat you. you I, mean, I mean, you cannot even eat it, you swallow it like a pill. And that's the end of it. But when you plant that same corn, you are going to have at least two years of corn as a result of that. And you can now, if you plant that one again, very soon you're going to have corn enough to feed the nation. And Jesus is saying, I am alone. If I die, I will bring a multiplier effect because my death will give the saints access to the life of God and access to the Holy Spirit. Greater works because you will not be alone. It will be a widespread manifestation of bodies that have been available to be used by God, even by the Spirit. You have that down? Now, the second reason is what is most important as to why Jesus used the concept of greater. And I want you to listen very carefully and let this enlighten your mind indeed. The first time the Lord told me I was, I was 
I was amazed that it had been in the Bible and yet I did not have the eyes to see. Now, here's what I wrote. In spite of the many miracles Jesus performed while on earth, there was one miracle which was the greatest need of man he could not perform. There was one miracle that Jesus could not perform, not before the cross, not after the cross, not until after the cross. Out of the many miracles that he did, he calmed the sea, he casted out devils, but there was one miracle and that miracle represented the greatest need of man. He did not have the ability and the allowance to perform that miracle because that miracle will demand death. The one miracle Jesus could not perform, all the saints can perform it today. Greater works. Jesus himself, watch this. He could forgive sins. He told many people, your sins are forgiven. But Jesus could not give anyone eternal life before his death. That one miracle, Jesus himself, there was no message to preach that men would believe. There was no blood of the remission of sins, yes. There was no death on the cross, yet. There was no resurrection, yet. So that miracle that represented the answer to the true state of man could not be performed by Jesus before the cross. So when he said greater works, he meant that the believer will have an advantage and be able to communicate the gospel in its entirety. Are we together now? Every problem Jesus solved while he was on earth was a symptom of man's real problem. The real problem of man was that he was alienated from the life of God. He needed more than healing. He needed more than bread. Are we together now? Everybody Jesus healed still died. Everybody Jesus fed still went hungry. But that one miracle of reconciliation it demanded that he would have to die, pay the price with his blood. Let me show you three scriptures. Colossians chapter 1, 12 to 14, then we'll jump to 19 and 20. Watch this. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. 13, it says, who had delivered us, watch this now, from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14, it says, in whom we have redemption. How? Not by a pronouncement. Every other miracle Jesus performed, he performed it with his word. But redemption happened beyond his word. His blood and his life had to, had to be shed. For man to be saved redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin 19 for it pleased the father that in him should all fullness dwell verse 20 now it says and having made peace how through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him i say paul is speaking whether they be things in earth all things in heaven reconciliation was not a miracle that happened just by a divine pronouncement because the bible says the wages of sin is death it says without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin so when jesus says greater works than this shall you do he meant that you will be empowered to in partnership with the holy spirit attend to the greatest need of man he was going to make the way available, but will become advocates of that truth, bearing witness to the truth. Next scripture, Ephesians 1, 7. Ephesians 1, 7. Paul again is speaking and he says, in whom we have redemption. Are you seeing it clearly from scripture that true redemption is only through the blood of Jesus, the forgiveness of sin, according to the riches, the abundance of his grace so Jesus worked many great miracles but there was one that could not be performed in his earth work the price for that miracle that happened to be the greatest miracle representing the greatest need of man could not be performed while Jesus was alive he had to die go to Hades shed his blood he had to resurrect by the glory of the father for that miracle to happen to men 
And today we thank God that that miracle is possible, that men can be reconciled to Jesus. That we who were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, the Bible says, we have been brought nigh through the blood of the eternal covenant. That we can come boldly to the throne of grace today and obtain mercy, find grace to help even in time of need. Are we together? So when Jesus says greater, it is important for us to know that he calls it greater because number one, the spirit of God has made the presence of Jesus unlimited. It is amazing that while I am here preaching, there is some preacher somewhere declaring the counsel of God. There is some evangelist somewhere, the same Holy Spirit sponsoring this spiritual advocacy. There is someone in his room watching a message right now. There is another person doing a one-on-one -on -one evangelism. There is another person reaching people in the village. There is another person speaking in French, another in Spanish, another in English, Hausa, another in Yoruba, another in Igbo. And all of these men, Jesus could not do all of that alone. But now greater works can happen because the Holy Spirit has made this possible. <laughs> Hallelujah. Imagine if you were the only one who had the ability to preach the gospel. Just one out of eight billion people. Number one, you will most likely die. Either of demonic attack or exhaustion. Are we together? When you read about the world's revival, one of the tragedies of men, respectfully speaking, like Ivan Roberts, who was the pioneer of the world's revival, the um, history now tells us that that man literally, he died of exhaustion and fatigue. Because there was such a move of God, the fire of God was spreading, you know, across his region. And then he had to be at the helm of affairs, managing the move of God at that point. And for sheer exhaustion, I think out of all God's generals recorded, as we know, he was the one who died youngest. And it was largely, it was not just of a demonic attack, we presume. He was just exhausted as a human being. Can I tell you, every time you stop men from accessing the life and the power of God and accessing the relevant graces that help them, number one, you are doing yourself a disservice because you will literally die of fatigue and exhaustion. There is a reason why God gave the ability for grace to be distributed from one person to the other so that you are limited in terms of your assignment and then your body can be able to take, it can take your spirit while you serve. There are many people today who are literally dying of fatigue, I would say. The reason is because they are afraid of empowering and raising others. Jesus was not. He said greater works. There was one Jesus, but there are many witnesses. One Jesus, the faithful witness, but today there are many witnesses. I don't know how many of them are in this place, but I presume everyone under the sound of my voice. Witnesses, mandated and anointed to bear witness to the light. And there are many, thousands and ten thousands of others following online. Witnesses, because Jesus said, greater works. Jesus met all kinds of people. He could rehabilitate their minds and prepare them to expect to receive salvation when all was said and done. But there was nobody, no mention of anybody receiving eternal life before Jesus died. He forgave sins. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. But that was impossible because sin is first in nature before an outworking. You can do your best using the principles of the law to stop the outworking. But that nature, the psalmist said, in sin, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Are we together? Greater works. Greater works. Hallelujah. There is what we can do that Jesus could not do before his death. Not as a result of limitations, but he had to subscribe to the protocol that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Today, we can stand and preach on the strength of what he has done and call many people to the cross and with joy and in a moment, that translation can happen from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son. I think he was... 
Billy Graham of blessed memory. I listened to one of his profound crusades. This was a crusade that he held probably in the 80s. And he was diagnosing the true state, the cancer that man really needed to be healed of. And he made references to all kinds of sicknesses that plague men and the efforts being made by the then world you know of medical science to solve and to cure many problems and he said the greatest of them the cancer that really needed healing in the life of man was that cancer of separation from Jesus Christ hallelujah now what is the ultimate goal of greater works to what end is this agenda what is this about why is Jesus insistent on the saints stepping into this dimension of greater works? I wrote here and I want you to listen and write, please. The ultimate goal for greater works, the ultimate goal for greater works is that the knowledge of the glory of God fills the entire earth, drawing many to Jesus. You see why I was profoundly blessed by the worship ministration of our precious people here that the entire goal for greater works is that the knowledge of the glory of God that it fills the entire earth every nation every city every nook and cranny drawing many to Jesus Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 14 Habakkuk 2 and verse 14 Read with me, please. Ready? One, two, read. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let's read it one more time. One, two, go. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. You know how much water is in the earth? The earth is about 70% water as we know. And then about 30% land and that I believe that may even be an old statistic because of things like global warming and the rest are we together now yes that the ice is melting and eating into land and so there is more land space being chopped up by water right now and the Bible says in that similitude the knowledge he never said the glory of the Lord the knowledge of the glory of the Lord and I've taught you that the glory of God consists of everything that makes God God his love his mercy his power he says that the knowledge of it the knowledge of his love the knowledge of his mercy the knowledge of his power the knowledge of his grace that it should cover the earth like waters the sea this is the reason why we need greater works to this end that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as waters the sea. Isaiah 40 and verse 5. Isaiah 40 and verse 5. It says, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. If that will happen through your life, shout a loud amen. amen. And the glory of the Lord, keep it there please media. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. It says, and all flesh shall see it together. All flesh, European flesh, American flesh, Asian people, all flesh shall see it. That means that revelation will not be hidden. No, it will not be boxed and hidden. There are things that God is going to be doing through the church before he returns. That it does not matter who loves God or who does not love God. It will be widespread news that this is what Jesus is doing testimonies and manifestations of his power in and through the saints and may you be part of that glorious army in the name of Jesus that as the wave of his spirit and power is sweeping across the nations that he will find a worthy vessel in you the glory of the Lord the love of the Lord the mercy of the Lord the power of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it Reminds me of an old song. From the rising of the sun, right on till it's going down, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. 
With my mouth will I make it known From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the glory of the Lord From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the favor of the Lord You see, listen I was preaching earlier on for a dear friend this morning and one of the things that I was teaching God's people is that when the glory of the Lord is revealed no one person is going to reveal every dimension of his glory because his glory is multifaceted there are those who have been mandated to reveal his favor there are those mandated to reveal his power there are those mandated to reveal his creativity while that grace comes from heaven be sensitive to what dimension of God you pick. Put to grant them access to understanding the communion. And he broke himself into many dimensions. Only God knows what dimension he gave you. There are people who have received his creativity. There are people who have received his healing power. Or a robot came and he said, my assignment is to reveal the healing power of Jesus to the nations. Full stop. That was his assignment. If you called him to teach on any other thing, he was a prosperous man. He knew how to walk by faith. Or a Roberts University today stands as a monument, a testament of a man's knowing God. And yet he believed that the theme of his life was to reveal the healing power of Jesus to the nations. When we talk about the knowledge of the glory of God covering the earth, ladies and gentlemen, hear me. If you do not rise and manifest in the spirit and in destiny, you will rob our world of seeing a dimension of God that has been hidden in you. Every book you are reading is the glory of God revealed. Are we together now? Every manifestation of his healing power is a dimension of his glory revealed. Imagine if I resisted the assignment God gave me. Only God knows how many salvations would have been aborted through that disobedience. And there are many people seated right now. There are various dimensions of God. We are going to sing that song one more time. Take it higher for me. Sing it with understanding in your spirit. And let it be from the depth of your heart. That with my life, with my mouth, with everything, I will make it known. You may not have the opportunity to travel like Billy Graham and Red Hat Bunker, but that which he has committed unto you, you must make up your mind that the nations will see the glory of God revealed in and through your life. It may be through singing like our worship people. And as you raise songs of worship, the nations will learn God as you hear the sounds. For some of you, you are a kingdom financier. A financial apostle you caught that dimension of God the nations are waiting there are evangelisms that cannot happen because you have refused to contend for kingdom wealth and supply that dimension of God I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth will I make it known from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will sing of the mercies of the lord i will sing of the mercies of the lord with my mouth will i make it known from the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord From the rising From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord I don't know what dimension you are going to be singing it is not only your voice that can sing, your hands can sing his praises. 
your wealth can sing his praises your mind can sing his praises in one minute declare the dimension you know he has given you to reveal for someone you are a revelation of the creativity of the Christ for another person you are a revelation of the power of Jesus take a minute and pray from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down i will sing of the glory of the lord i will sing of the power of the lord i will sing of the wisdom of the Lord I will sing of the favor of the Lord I will sing of the mercies of the Lord With my mouth will I make it known From the rising of the sun Right on till it's going down I will sing of the mercies of the Lord I will sing of the mercies of the Lord I received the song by the Spirit years ago and every time I teach on this area I'm reminded of that song let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall ah. let it cover all let the weight of your glory fall through my life let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let it cover all the earth. 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 Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy, worthy of my praise. King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life, Adonai, 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 said declaration from your spirit. Listen, let your kingdom come. That's a prayer from a hungry generation. Let your kingdom come. Ah, let your kingdom come. Hey, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. In and through my life, let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come. Shabra Shabalaka Paruska friend of the Lekatosiata. Adonai, Lamb of God, you are worthy. Worthy of my praise, 
King of kings, Lord of lords, let your kingdom reign in my life. 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 Pray it. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Let your kingdom reign in my life. Beyond every other agenda. Let your kingdom reign in my life. 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 Let your kingdom Let your kingdom come. Let your kingdom come in my life. Let your kingdom rule. Let your kingdom rule. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. I assure you by the spirit of the living God that before Jesus returns the nations will see a display of his grace once again and the purpose of it will be nothing else no glorification of self and the flesh but that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord the knowledge of the love of the Lord it will be beyond one-on-one -on -one evangelism it will be beyond just passing tracks as important as that is. It will be a wave, a tsunami of his power and his grace across the nations of the earth. One supernatural manifestation of his hand that will rattle the foundation of nations. This will happen by the spirit and it will not just happen through men. It will not just happen through women. It will happen also through children. Everybody says the spirit will be poured upon all flesh, adult flesh, child flesh, educated flesh, uneducated flesh, elderly flesh, young flesh, men and women will access power in the spirit. Do you believe this? This is what we call kingdom come. It's an agenda that will never fail. The jealousy of God is behind this agenda. He would rather a nation perish than this agenda fail. Please be seated if you can in one minute. My heart was stirred up every time we talk about the revelation of the glory of the Lord. It does something to my spirit because this is the focal point of the believer's pursuit. Let your kingdom reign in my life. 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 Man of God, God is speaking to you. Beyond building of churches, he desires his kingdom to find expression. Beyond marketing of flesh and self, he desires his kingdom to be established. Beyond koinonia, beyond denominationalism, he desires his kingdom to move past the barriers of denomination, to move past, it is even beyond the pulpit. The revelation of the glory of God is beyond good preaching, beyond Greek and Hebrew. That he wants the entire strata of human experience and existence to experience everything that is contained in God. His wisdom, his power, his grace. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, as mighty as God is, he's counting on us. I told my dear people in Lagos that we have known the God who sends men. 
but we must know the men sent by God. The world is gradually coming into an appreciation of the fact that there is a God in heaven. But God is revealed when his men are revealed. We call it the reflection principle. Glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you. God cannot be revealed in our generation when the men that are so called and anointed and furnished by him refuse to be revealed. The earnest expectation of creation, the Bible says, awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. The goal of the greater work agenda is to see that the knowledge of the glory of God that it fills the entire earth drawing many to Jesus John 4 48 Jesus was speaking and he said except ye see miraculous signs and wonders ye will not believe listen to me we live in a time we live in a dispensation where men will need to see a display of the glory of God in its entirety to believe Men will not believe cheaply just because of some religious sentiments proposed by Christians. Gone are the days where people believe blindly. Their convictions need to be heightened through the display, the manifestation of God's glory. It says the Greeks seek for a sign. Except ye see miraculous signs and wonders, ye will not believe. I make reference again to John 20, 30. The Bible says, and many other miracles did Jesus. John 20, 30, in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book, 31 says, but these are recorded, written, that ye might believe. They are not just recorded to show that he's so powerful, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that in believing, you will have life. Hallelujah. Greater works will lead to greater conviction. Greater conviction will lead to greater salvation. Greater acknowledgement of Christ in the world of men. Greater acknowledgement of the Christ in the world of men. When there is a display of greater works, listen to me, it will bring about greater conviction. When there is greater conviction, it will bring greater salvation in all its ramification and when there is greater salvation it will bring a greater acknowledgement of the Christ in the world of men I'm reminded of Daniel chapter 3 please give it to us from verse 28 I believe Nebuchadnezzar by reason of the display of the glory of the Lord fire not having authority and power over the three Hebrew boys here was the conclusion of that matter he said Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god. As a result, 29. Therefore, he says, I make a decree that every people, my goodness, can this happen in our world today that the president of a nation because of the manifestation of the power of God will be compelled to make a decree not a religious decree not a bias as a result of what God would have done in his life every people nation language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach Meshach and Abednego shall be cut in pieces what a decree and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this manner. There is no other God that can deliver. I have seen many try to heal, but none can heal like Jesus. I have seen doctors do their best to manage patients, but how about the great physician that can heal without a surgery? Hallelujah. Mm. this is what God is doing across the nations I believe it he's bringing everything in obedience to Christ he's rearranging everything in obedience to Christ 
He's recreating everything in obedience to Christ. Rebuilding everything in obedience to Christ. Now, for part one of this series, I want to show you at least two of the spiritual forces that must be engaged for every believer who desires to walk in the experience of greater works as wonderful we have heard the word and we sang songs of power and grace but it's important for you to know that greater works come with a price there are forces that must be engaged in the life of the believer to walk in the experience of greater works you can know this you can sing greater works you can desire greater works you can prophesy greater works but it may never be captured in your life and your christian experience until you understand that there is a demand there is a price there are spiritual forces that must be engaged in your life in order to experience greater works and for tonight's session i will give you two of them number one the first force that is responsible for activating this greater work dimension in every believer is called the force of prayer please write it down the force of prayer particularly i want to teach you how to use prayer as a tool to birth and establish the purposes of god across a territory greater works for the saints for any territory is at the mercy of believers who have sustained spiritual intelligence to know how to use the tool and the weapon of prayer to both birth and sustain the program of god every program of god is birthed and managed by the prayer ministry men and women who do not know how to use prayer you can know how to use prayer to get your needs that is wonderful you can know how to get pray to use prayers for personal things but now this is beyond just personal needs i'm talking about an apostolic order of prayer where you use prayer as a tool you find out what god wants to do because it is god who is at work in us both to will and to do and you use the weapon and the tool of prayer to establish the program of god The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, listen, shall humble themselves. Is that in your Bible? And pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. It says, then will I hear from heaven and then I will forgive their sin and heal not their bodies. Heal their land. The healing of the land is God's desire, but it is at the mercy of certain people that people can come together corporately with understanding knowing that this is what God wants to do in Abuja are we together you see the assignment of the prophetic if and when done accurately is to capture by the gift and the spirit of the prophetic God's blueprint per season and then to hand it over that is the reason why the prophetic goes hand in glove with the ministry of intercession every true prophet in scripture was also an intercessor you know why because they have the assignment to see and to establish in and through the place of prayer jesus would never have come until there is a prophetess a prophetess called anna the bible does not call her an intercessor it calls her a prophetess yet we never see her prophesying the only thing we see that she did was intercession yet the bible says she was a prophetess the real assignment of a prophet is beyond just prophesying to individuals there is a place for that the re in fact let me tell you the truth true prophets in scripture were not easily seen are we together there were men who were men of the altar they were always in hiding it would take a lot for you to see men like samuel there were dates and times when Samuel would come out and you would see people running. Finally, that CI is about to come out. And if for any reason you collided with him on the way, even if it's your donkey, it must return home. 
because these were men of the altar. I don't know how many people met Anna the prophetess in their life. There's no record, no known record. She was a woman who remained in the temple because she received by prophetic insight that salvation was to come to men and that she would not taste death until she saw the consolation of Israel. And her assignment was not just to say, wow, Maranatha. <clears throat> it was in the place of prayer. Can I tell you, please look up. As I'm saying this, that grace is going to be resting on people. That grace to pray. Listen, there is a dimension of prayer where you are not the one leading yourself again. Your assignment is to get there. You are carried by the Spirit of God. It is at that realm. You are not praying at the frequency of your will again. God takes you over and you are speaking things that you do not even understand. You don't have a prayer point. Your passion is the only ingredient needed in that place of prayer. Hallelujah. This is beyond the realm of just intercession. This is like a woman in labor. As soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth. There is no birthing without travailing. Listen, there are many of you, God can allocate territories to you as a project and say Abuja should not fail under your watch. It's not by going on social media or going and, and gathering people. It's by staying in the secret place, knowing that this is your mandate, that God has given you a project. God can allocate five businessmen and say these men are kingdom financiers. That is your project. Your assignment is to pray the will of God to come to pass in their lives. Many pray, but very few understand the dimensions of prayer. Africa is a praying continent. And sadly, the more we pray, the more the forces of darkness seem to go unhindered. Because for many, prayer is just religiosity to ease the guilt of feeling less spiritual. That is not the assignment of prayer. Show me any move of God that did not happen at the instance of prayer. And I can tell you that was not a move of God indeed. We pray for hours in Africa and it carries very little power. Because number one, our motif and motivation is corrupted. And number two, the entire span of the prayer largely is driven by self. Hallelujah. So God comes to you and says, I want to restore the healing anointing in Africa like it was in the 50s the 60s and don't just sit down and say well there are joshua selmans and there are men of god it will never come to pass when you receive that for god to trust you with that revelation your next assignment is to know that you must bear certain things listen to me i can tell you sincerely the reason why many people never see what god told them is because they do not know that between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm there is a womb. The womb incubates spiritual things and stays there. When a baby is nine months and a woman cannot give birth, I'm not a medical doctor, but there are times because of excessive delay, you can induce the person. And if it does not happen by normal delivery, there's something called CS. By any means, that baby must come out when it's time. But there are many people who do not know how to birth prophecy. There are things that were supposed to happen to your region, your family since 2018. But men who can push through in the place of prayer, God keeps reminding you, you wake up with dreams not knowing what they mean. The dreams are not just God giving you a movie to watch. He's informing you, I need partnership. It's the spirit and the bride that says come. It's the spirit and the bride that says come. Men of prayer with understanding are also men of power in their generation. I repeat, men of prayer with understanding are men of power with their, in their generation. Koinonia, hear me? Please listen. Don't you think that all it takes to put a service like this is just excellent media, excellent voices, a wonderful pulpit, nicely dressed ministers. No, sir. You try it and see if you will survive one month. There are forces that are determined to fight the purposes of God. And there are men and women anointed and bless everyone who is part of this ministry, who is committed to the ministry of prayer, praying the will of God every week, every month, every time. 
when you ever see anything succeed in the earth realm to God's standard and satisfaction prayer ushered the way for that move ladies and gentlemen please hear me we must be men of prayer but our prayer must be, be beyond the need to just feel spiritual. There are many people today who pray not because they like prayer, who pray not because they believe it. They are just under pressure because we have created a narrative that if you don't pray, you are not spiritual. So most people carry it as a burdensome ritual, as a necessary luggage they must carry. The true spirit of prayer and supplication does not come by compulsion. It comes by revelation. There is something you need to know about the value of prayer as far as God's program is concerned. That knowledge is what empowers you to pray. Hallelujah. The force of prayer. Show me the mountain that has refused to move. I show you the mountain that prayer has not really hit it. When prayer comes, did your Bible not say the fervent and effect? There are many kinds of prayer in the Bible. There is praying amiss, energetic prayer, but inconsistent with God's pattern. And there is praying with understanding that produces power. He says, for as a prince thou hast had power with God. You see, God gave you the prayer language because of the obvious limitations that we have. That the Bible has come to acknowledge that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to. But he says, the spirit helpeth. To help is not to take over the responsibility of your life. Can I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, when you want to change nations, you start by changing your Jerusalem. Don't leave your Jerusalem dying and you are trying to change Samaria. When your family has not experienced the life and the grace and the power of God, even if you don't know what to do, the first assignment is to know that there are things that God desires. He's spoken great things about his Zion, but it must happen at the instance of prayer. Can I tell you sincerely, when God finds people whose motives have been purified, whose prayer is not just a way of easing guilt of spirituality, but people who want to be part of his program you will see God move in unusual dimensions the strength of darkness is not because darkness is strong the strength of darkness is because the saints are lazy the saints are lazy plus Jesus minus Satan amen laziness spiritually the Bible says if you sow to the flesh you will reap of the flesh corruption you want to become a great man of God you gather all the gallons of anointing oil you can get. I'm not being sarcastic. Without a rich prayer ministry, there are many things is until the day God reveals to you or when you are done with your time on earth, God will tell you this should have happened if you prayed. This should have happened if you prayed. I had planned that between January and March, there was a door in the spirit I planned to open for your ministry. But there were people who were lazy and could not pray. And because of that spiritual slumber, the Bible says where men slept, an enemy came. An enemy does not come when you are awake. While men slept. While men slept. There are altars that seem to not answer to many families. It's because they have not found people that can pray. If any of you shall touch, shall ask anything, how did he put it now? If any of you shall agree as touching anything, as touching anything, you learn to pray as, as a habit, not an emergency response system. That is important, but you must go beyond that. Father, my job is being threatened. I can't agree. That's wonderful. But you must learn to pray. There are, if you are a real man of prayer, you will know you are a man of prayer because in many instances, you will not have a prayer point. You will allow him to be the Lord of hosts in your prayer life. You don't just go with a list and say, Father, thank you. You are the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Rose of Sharon, the beginning and the end. And you quickly pass with those preambles. Lord, I'm here again. Please. This issue I've been talking. Is it that you will keep watching me like this? And many people talk and at the end of it, they say, Amen. Just because you said, Amen, did not mean you prayed. And just because you stayed long there, did not mean you prayed. There is something called effectual 
and fervent prayer. I have told you effectual means it must be word compliant. Fervent means your heart must be involved. Prayer that is word compliant and prayer that your all is invested into it. The Bible says it produces power. It avails much. I can tell you sincerely and I stand before God and before his people over 85 to perhaps 90 percent of my prayer is not for myself and it's not a habit i did i just started now no let your program come oh god where are the people you are raising in this season i don't know them but you know them mine is to agree with the spirit of grace lord visit them give them an encounter and while you are praying i can tell you the bible may not tell us but Saul did not just meet with Jesus just like that. I am sure there was somebody who received the burden of that prayer. And he said, I may not know who I'm praying for. But Lord, that Pharisee that needs to encounter you, let that person encounter you. And while Paul was breathing threats on his way to Damascus, that light came and hit him down. Can I tell you, God moves when men pray. God moves when men pray. He does not just hear. He hears when men cry. But he moves when men pray. God moves when men pray. God moves when men pray. Hallelujah. The force of prayer. You want to survive the days that are coming? You want to be part of God's prophetic program? You want to step into that realm of greater works? You must learn to pray. You must learn to pray. You must learn to pray. Pray the will of God. Pray the purposes of God. First in your life and then across every territory. Can I tell you, praying especially in the spirit solves many problems at once. While you are praying with your mind, focus on the program of God. Edification is also happening in your spirit, man. Look at this. Let me tell you what prayer does to an individual as far as edification is concerned. Have you tried to turn the knob of a tap, a tap that runs with water, and just open it a little and you see it dripping down? That is not all the water that can come, but that is the only allowance the tap has provided. You try to fill a bucket with a drop of water coming drop by drop, and you can remain there. Prayer enlarges and it expands your capacity that that which is locked up in your spirit man can find visible expression. You have the eyes to see already. You have the ears to hear already, but it is being trapped between your spirit and this realm. There is a layer that only prayer can tear open. You are prayerless and you just lay hands on people and say the Bible said they shall lay hands on the sick. You will be disappointed. Ladies and gentlemen, you hear testimonies here that people say, oh, before August 25th, I don't mean to be arrogant, but you try it. Make a decree like that. Human beings are not fools. There are things that is, this is not a bracatabra. I am Gabriel who standeth in the presence of God. That is what Gabriel told Zechariah. When Zechariah doubted his statement, he said, Me, I am Gabriel. I'm coming before the presence of God. Do you know the implication? Will I carry this falsehood before the presence of God? I am Gabriel that stands in the presence of God. A man who can stand in the presence of God can change the climate of nations and territories. It is my prayer that we will accent realms in prayer where we can make one prophetic decree by the Spirit and literally shift the climate of nations. Africa is in a prophetic season right now and I can tell you that all that is happening across our continent from a standpoint of God's program is a product of many people investments of prayers of many years did the bible not say the prayers of the saints are contained in vials in heaven don't you ever think any genuine prayer you made is a waste god may look slow but your heaven is being filled with rain by the time the rain the bible says and if the cloud be full of rain mama you have been praying for your son for 20 years you'll be patient maybe this is the final year don't give up in prayer prayer requires stamina did you hear what I said prayer requires stamina when you do not see an answer be like Elijah pray again
pray again, pray again, fast again, decree again, speak again. Apostle, I prayed for power, nothing came. Go back again and pray. Go back again and decree. Go back again, stand in that presence. One day, you would not have planned it. You would just go to the place of prayer as usual. Whereas that will be the day the mantle of your destiny finally arrives. Hallelujah. When a plane leaves, say Lagos to Abuja, for over 50 minutes you will not see the plane until the last two or three minutes, perhaps maybe the last four minutes thereabout. That's when you will see the plane. It will come visibly, but it does not mean it was not moving. From the very time that they told you the plane had left, it truly left. But just because it's somewhere in the cloud, are we together now? And those who are coming to pick their loved ones, they wait in expectation. Sometimes because of weather condition, there can be delays. Are we together? Sometimes instructions are given to the pilots to hang on. Maybe there's a presidential jet about to land and they suspend them for a while. So you may see a little delay for five, maybe 10, maybe 15 minutes, but the plane is still landing. And those who wait, they wait with expectation. Provided it lifted, it will not remain in the air. There are many of you from the very first day you went to pray, certain things had left heaven. Are we together now? You pray. You don't pray one day and get the result of 10 years. You are joking. Prayer is an investment. Are we together now? Yes. I'm saying this because if you want to see greater works, ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you there is a responsibility component to it. Impartations are wonderful, but our generation is getting drunk with impartation and is driving them away from the responsibility of building a personal altar of prayer. I have taught you about altars, that an altar is a system of authorization. You get up and you see that you were in a dream healing people revealing the glory of God don't just write it down and say a powerful dream it will never come to pass until you get to pray apostle I went to bed oh, and I saw people giving me money that is a possibility that God wants to make happen but without birthing it in the place of prayer no so you go to pray everything God shows me that is consistent with his will my next responsibility is to agree with him like Mary be it unto me according to your word then the part two of it is not to irresponsibly sit down and say after all apostle is praying for me no that is not an effective Christian way I will pray for you as a responsibility but you must obtain grace and go down on your knees and shut your door and say enough is enough Lord you showed me this you said by now my family should have risen I may not know what direction to go but I begin to pray and you are there repeat it again the next day repeat it the next day repeat it the next day you hear that everybody is getting sick in your family don't sit down and say I know one day go better hold on to the horns of the altar and pray do you believe what I'm teaching you? The spirit of death comes to open the door of your house and you fold your arms. I've been sensing that there is a spirit of death in this house. That discernment is a waste if you don't drive it in the place of prayer. Are we together? There are many believers when things happen to you and people around you, you say, but I saw it. What did you do about it? I saw you too. I saw this thing. The realm of the spirit was telling you that there is something about to happen in the earth realm. You can allow or disallow and carelessness and laziness made you to just ignore until evil happened. Make up your mind ladies and gentlemen. Man of God, don't allow the devil come and destroy your ministry. I just sense that something is wrong. It looks like there is an attack around my church. What are you doing about it? You are just folding your arms? You don't know how determined Satan is when believers become lazy. 30 days without prayer, with understanding, gave him room. He wanted 30 days 
to wreak havoc over Babylon. Hallelujah. The only thing worse than praying and miss is not being prayerful at all. It's even better to pray and make the mistake God can correct you. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not lie to yourself and say, me, I'm not a prayer warrior. There's nothing called the gift of prayer in the Bible. Go and read it. Among the gift of the Spirit, prayer is not there. If you ever think prayer is convenient, you lie to yourself. Prayer is like taking your bath. Prayer is like eating. There are times you are lazy and you almost don't want to smell water, but you know that you need it for your health. And sometimes you have to drag yourself in the morning. Be sleepy while you are praying. You just start praying and a miracle happens. But one thing I can tell you about prayer is prayer can become a habit empowered by the spirit of grace and supplication. Are we learning? You want to see the glory of God revealed? You must learn to pray not just as a group so that people will see you praying and say this man is powerful Hannah was not interested in all of that corporate prayer is powerful but corporate prayer is what you bring from your secret place prayer is one area you cannot lie about if you are not you can be hypocritic about other things but not prayer because the kind of energy that you bring in the open must be built in the secret you can't fake that one I can tell you hallelujah and you see let me tell you something about being prayerful there is a presence and power that accompanies a life of consistent prayer such that you obtain grace you can stand before a prayerless person and discern weakness in the spirit you can know that this person is sincere but you can discern powerlessness and weakness that if the devil should strike at this person he's gone except immune by the ministry of intercessors he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray. Koinonia, hear me. Just believing somebody is praying for you alone is good but not all profitable. Every family must become a family of prayer. Everybody must become a person of prayer. Wake up in the night. Discipline yourself. You may not have the grace to pray 10 hours, 5 hours. You will not even have the time to do that every day. Let me tell you the truth. But one thing you can do is you can build a system of consistency around your life. It's better for me to spend 2 hours praying every night and recreate my destiny than to sleep for that two hours and suffer for 30 years. It's a foolish bargain to allow slumber of one or two hours. Please don't feel sad. I'm not being hard on you without a reason. I'm just challenging and stretching you. Listen to me. If you are here and you are prayerless, receive deliverance this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive deliverance this night and begin to practice it from this night you wake up there are strategies that can enhance prayer one of it is an atmosphere of worship an atmosphere of worship can prime your passion for prayer are we together if you need to use your alarm clock why not it's a blessing don't say i must be i, I must wake up by the spirit you are not being serious wake up by any means you can wake up doesn't matter if, the, most of us just live around this i know the holy ghost has a way of waking me by one o'clock you tiredness you can sleep till morning even jesus slept until men woke him up are we together so don't don't make a fool of your christian experience and say if the holy ghost wants me to wake up he has a way of waking me up no discipline yourself wisdom is profitable to direct Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim Madonna. Sometimes. I can be sitting down as a leader and I can just have visions of tragedies that the devil wants to bring over people or see certain things that God wants to put in the life of people that becomes part of my prayer project believe me if I tell you I'm praying for you 
I want you to believe it. I may forget sometimes because I'm human, but as much as I can, if you see me writing and saying I'm praying for you, know that I'm praying for you. Hallelujah. Yes. And while some of you are snoring away valuable prophetic speakings on your life, there are people who are praying. Shakakoski Ataba. Randy Cabriatosia, I've seen in the spirit that favor is supposed to rest upon Koinonia. Lord, I give you no rest until you establish Jerusalem as a praise and you are praying. While you are praying, on Tuesday, prayer department takes it like that. Every department is really a prayer department. It's just that there is one dedicated to the ministry of prayer. Hallelujah. King of kings, Lord of lords, Faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Imagine a worship song like this waking you up in the night. Shaba Katosiata. You lie down on the bed and you just program it. You imagine what you are hearing waking you up in the night. Worship him, why not? You can have a one hour session of worship like this and put it online. Help people. You don't have to be the one to sing yourself. And while it is playing, there's something that worship does to the spirit of man. It can take away laziness. Tiredness can dry away in one moment. Pray in the spirit for one minute whilst you are there. He pras kata parenda ke parusia ta, rakete pas kata parenda ke fres kata beleketa. Greater works, greater works across the nations of the earth. Greater works, birthed and enforced in the place of prayer. Birthed and enforced in the place of prayer. Birthed and enforced in the place of prayer. Go ahead and pray. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. King of kings, Lord of lords, faithful and true, Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Pray. Lamb of God, we worship you. Lamb of God, we worship you. Take a minute and fold all seasons in your life. Fold all seasons in your life. That everything that is inconsistent with God's blueprint in my life, I hold on to the horns of the altar and I decree, let it be done in this earth as it is in the heavens. Koinonia pray, Zaria pray, a global family pray. Emmanuel, all the world is calling your name. Emmanuel, when you come again. Emmanuel, and the church will see your holy face. Emmanuel. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Hear me, in the name of Jesus, are you learning? Listen, your first response to anything you see or hear in the spirit or any prompting at all, whether by the Holy Spirit or another kind of spirit is to pray. Prayer filters all revelations. Driving away that which is inconsistent with the will of God and establishing that which is consistent with the will of God. 
you are a businessman I know that your transaction is where your reward comes from but your discernment does not come from transactions your discernment comes from prayer thou shall hear a voice saying this is the way walk ye in it you can transact well but in a wrong location if you are Isaac and you get out of Egypt and don't and and sow in another place you will not reap anything even though you have the ability to sow hallelujah listen to me let me challenge everybody here and I'm speaking to our global family I have a responsibility over you I want you to find a day this week that even if it's for two three hours except otherwise if God can give you grace please I give you the permission organize a family prayer for yourself and use one two hours settle certain things in your life are you getting what I'm saying now if you're a father here you are you are married you're a family man I I put that responsibility on you don't lazily say my wife is the one who can pray in the name of Jesus you have grace now yeah. spearhead that move gather your children John where are you Stephanie where are you in the name of Jesus we are praying tomorrow and if God grants you grace you can declare a fast the children can fast to 12 they will not die don't pamper them into spiritual weakness if the same children are sick they will not eat for three days and they don't die hallelujah please listen this is an assignment to the koinonia global family you can use one day it doesn't have to be all the day but use one day if you don't have a family look for somebody to agree with you and say in the name of jesus christ write a list of the things you want to deal with and if you do not know pray lord what am i doing on earth i'm tired of going around escorting men across their destinies reveal to me you said call on to me and i will answer i will show you great and mighty things you can pray your personal requests and then pray for the program of god hallelujah bring before the throne that dream you saw you saw your mother dying you saw your father dying you saw ministry failing are we together now you saw your business failing don't sit down and let it happen then you say I saw it your seeing does not profit you your hearing does not profit you until you know how to allow or disallow things in prayer for as long as I am alive my life will operate based on the will of God in partnership with my terms no devil who is not part of my life has the authority to put his hand in the affairs of my life or if you see it in a vision it will remain there prayer will hang it there for my lifetime it will not bring it down my assignment is to select the events in the spirit that are consistent with the will of God and to allow them to be made manifest hallelujah let me give you one more prayer father place upon me the grace to pray go ahead and pray place upon me you are here pray for your husband you are here pray for your wife you are here pray for your children take serious this prayer point Zaria are you praying koinonia global pray and as many who are connecting please pray for the grace the grace to pray the discipline to pray with understanding fervent effectual fervent effectual you are a man of God here pray twice the days that are coming will not allow spiritual laziness you really need capacity in the spirit Hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. It's the Lord.
is the Lord God Almighty. My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. Hallelujah. I'm hearing something in my spirit and the Lord is saying I should tell you. There are two people here God is speaking to you and he's saying restore your prayer life. You were once a person of great prayer but you veered off because of carelessness and God is saying I'm still waiting for you at the place of prayer. I'm still waiting for you. I'm still waiting for you. There are songs you used to sing because you were a man of prayer, a woman of prayer. You've even forgotten them. You don't even know them again. Go back and carry your old notebook. The notebooks that you used to write those songs. Go back again. There are scriptures you used to know because you always use them in the place of prayer. Now you have forgotten them. Go back and carry those old notebooks again and begin to pray. Pray with understanding. Pray for victory. Pray to establish your enthronement. Pray to be a candidate for greater works. Please be seated. Spare me a few more minutes. Hallelujah. There is a quickening that is happening to your spirit man. To be quickened means to be made alive. Awake thou that sleepest. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord, for in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. Hallelujah. I raised that song and I was seeing a woman in my vision. You are the only one out of all your family people who is saved. Your husband is not even saved. And you have two children let me tell you commit yourself to interceding don't say God cannot save your husband you don't know who he is Amen. God cannot is because you don't know who he is hallelujah God can visit your husband visit your children have you not heard the testimonies of people here it doesn't matter what the limitation is one of the ways you build your faith is in the place of prayer but ye beloved it says building up yourselves in your most holy faith praying 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 in the Holy Ghost let me give you a kind advice never take a step over anything you have not prayed about no matter how sure you are even if it is five minutes prayer with understanding one decision that is filtered through the place of prayer can save you 10 years 20 years perhaps a lifetime of misery hallelujah the force of prayer let me give you one more and then we're done for part one there's someone you are watching me from Lagos another person is watching me from Calabar I just saw a mighty impartation that is happening to you for one you're a man and a woman sitting in front of your phone you play something like you are recording and you are following me there is there is light and fire and grace that is resting upon you in the name of Jesus and the Lord is showing me overflow one in Zaria there is someone overflow one in Zaria the power of God is coming upon you and the Lord is saying he's restoring visions the grace for visions overflow one in Zaria the power of God is coming upon you and the Lord is saying he's restoring visions 
in the name of Jesus I decree and declare let there be a mighty restoration a mighty restoration in the name of Jesus can I tell you something look at me one moment one idea there are many ideas by the grace of God that run this ministry that came in the place of prayer the blueprint for the next season of this ministry came when God moved us to Abuja I told you already it was in the place of prayer that God gave me certain instructions and obeying that instruction if you do not know what to do in your life start by praying in the place of prayer direction comes you confirm that direction with scripture and the witness of the spirit and then obtain grace to walk in keeping with the direction you have received you have found your way out of any situation with prayer comes direction with direction will come confirmation just because you received it in a place of prayer does not mean to execute it because all things must pass through the lens of scripture satan can also appear as an angel of light and sometimes even in the midst of prayer your mind can speak to you and because of the atmosphere with which you received it from you can think is god until you open it is written you will find out that as zealous and as powerful as that prompting was it was not really god don't be ashamed because you are growing the devil can wait for people in that atmosphere of prayer he will slip in a lot of things that are not the will of God and you will say yes Lord to everything and then ignore the written word this is what makes your prayer effectual effectual means you submit it to scripture fervent means your heart is involved in it you can pray and come out with error from the place of prayer because you did not exalt the word of God above whatever you received in the place of prayer it was while Jesus prayed that Satan came and said turn this stone into bread if you were Jesus after fasting for 40 days and hearing that every voice you hear you will assume is the Holy Spirit and you say speak Lord I'm listening and you will turn a stone to bread and rubbish a great ministry that is about to start but Jesus said it is written he never said I prayed he said it is written there are many people who go to pray and in the place of prayer they hear all kinds of things both what God is saying and what flesh is saying and what demons are saying because your ears your capacity to pick signals from the spirit is heightened and the realm of the spirit is a noisy realm there is as it were many voices and none of them is without signification the voice of the Holy Spirit is not the only voice you will hear it takes a lot of training death alignment for you to filter other voices and to learn how God speaks to you and talking about the way God speaks I've done a teaching on the voice of God. I want you to look for it online and I hope that we'll have the opportunity to teach again. We have a series along the lines of hearing God. There are many people who claim to hear God, but at the end of it, you will find out that the performance that follows what they heard does not birth the glory of God. That must be self because your heart also has a voice. It says, say not in your heart. That means your heart speaks and demons speak. Satan will not speak to you and say, I am Satan, rise up. No. Satan will tilt towards the area of your passion and your hunger. If you have been fasting, he will say, turn this stone into bread. He will come and fashion the weapon against you based on your need. And sometimes you're lost. Say amen. amen. So we need to pray. But we need to submit our prayer to the word of God. There are many people today, their conviction has been destroyed because of wrong things they had in the place of prayer. They will tell you, I prayed and God told me that in the place of prayer, I saw myself collecting your car. Give me my thing. And they are sincere because that's what they were manipulated to hear. But once you take that towards your will, you will know that the only person who acts like that is Satan. Jesus is never called the thief. It is the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. God will never give you the ministry of stealing, killing, and destruction. Are we together? Yes. 
Father, I like the job that this man is doing. And even though I do not have it, can you for God's sake, even though this is, person is a church member or is my tribe's person, can you remove the person out of this job and give me? That may look like a, 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 it's a sincere prayer, but it's a foolish one. And God is merciful because before God rates you, he will look at your level of knowledge. Perhaps you have been wrongly mentored to imagine that anything you want, kick whatever is standing in front of it. There are rules to engage. I told you that when you say, let God arise and all his enemies, the people to be scattered are his enemies, not your enemies. His enemy is anybody who perpetually becomes an interruption to the manifestation of his will. And that can include you, even if you are Jonah. You can be a genuine, serious man of God and yet become God's enemy. So before you pray that prayer, the rule of engagement is you must be sure. He says, sanctify yourself for after three days, God will reveal himself. Because when he comes, his glory does not care what is there. The same glory that lifts and births is the glory that kills. Most believers have brought casualty upon themselves. They have empowered demon spirits to prevail over them by authorizing things without understanding in the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. It is written, must be your code, must be your rule of engagement while you pray. Are we together now? Yes. The second force, I touch it quickly and wherever I stop, we'll continue next week. Is God speaking to anyone? The second force that controls the manifestation of greater works in the kingdom is called the force of wisdom. Please write it down. The force of wisdom. Mark 6, 2. Mark 6, 2. Mark 6, 2. Esther. The Lord is visiting your family. I'm hearing the name Esther. In the name of Jesus, the reproach over your life and your family. I'm speaking to you by the spirit of prophecy. My God is rolling it away now. Esther, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is showing me a woman, you are from Emo State, and the Lord is saying that trap of darkness, in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare that that trap of darkness, there is a trap the devil is setting for you in the days that are coming, but by the authority of scripture, we declare it broken right now. You escape from it like the bird from the snare of the fowler. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just allow me to do my thing. Wherever our time is, we'll share the grace. But my assignment is to make sure that you receive the fullness of the hand and the grace of God. Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone, I'm seeing a drawing board. You are an architect. You are an architect. The Lord is saying your season has come. I don't know who that person is. I hope you know that prophetic decrees are not empty. By now you should know. I'm praying over that architect. I don't know who you are. But in the name of Jesus, you will come and stand here to testify. I'm speaking to you by the spirit of grace. Whatever has taunted you that the door has refused to open is still our year of open doors. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus who died and rose again. Let that closed door be open over your life. Hallelujah. Write it down. There is somebody I saw. I'm, I don't know if it's the right time to say this because we're discussing serious issues. But I will say it because I've seen it and God has allowed me to say it. I saw the amount 4 million naira. And I saw that the Lord is bringing through someone and bringing it to somebody. 4 million. Exactly that amount. Hallelujah. Now you see why I said we're, when we're discussing issues like this. I don't want to take, once you talk money, you bring people out of a certain frequency, but receive it while you are still focused in the name of Jesus Christ. You will think I'm joking until you hear somebody come to testify. In the name of Jesus, you have been failing in business, failing in business. You have done the best you know to do, failing in business. It's not just an attack. There is something only God can show you. And the Lord is saying, I shall release grace on you. I'm praying for you. 
where others have not seen there is something God can clean your eyes to see I'm praying for you in the name of he who died and rose again this week may your eyes see it this week may your eyes see it listen it says and I will give you the treasures of darkness the the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places that other people can be passing and they will not see anything but like Hagar in a desert you will still see an oasis that no one else is seeing I'm saying it again may your eyes see it yeah. hallelujah please sit down perhaps it's because we took our time to just talk about this the Lord is showing me a woman you have three children as you are sitting now your very prayer point is the school fees of the children you don't know where that school fees is going to come from between now and Saturday write it and mark my word the Lord himself just one person is going to be raised by God it will be like a coincidence and the person is going to ask the state of your children and grant you the money not just to pay their school fees but also to take care of the needs of the family I call upon God who is Ebenezer to visit this woman and visit this family in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah you know where this grace came from I used to see our father in the Lord Baba Deboe when he's preaching he will stop and say thank you Jesus and say there is someone here and I said there has to be a point where men can access this grace in the name of Jesus I say it again by the power that raised Christ from the dead that everyone here who is in I'm seeing the issue of rent house rent this is what God is showing me in the name of Jesus there is grace for it just allow me release it I'm decreeing now please help them by the power that raised Christ from the dead by all scriptural means between now and the weekend may my God raise help for you may my God raise help for you somebody will call you and I'm not speaking empty words I fear God somebody will call you between today and Thursday and he will say come and when you come you will see the keys of a car given to you this is not for everybody this is for an exact specific person I know you are saying amen because you need it and God will honor you but I'm speaking to an exact person as it is being revealed to me by the Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I'm hearing a prophetic word for someone apply again this is what I don't know who that person is please help them apply again there is a grace that will go with you now apply again I'm saying it to you by the Spirit of the Living God apply again you did it in the strength of the flesh but my God is saying I should speak to you apply again there is a grace that is going with you The way God does these things is a sign and a wonder. Amazing. Hallelujah. Two weeks ago, your father went to be with the Lord. Who is that person? About two weeks ago, your father transited, went to be with the Lord. I want to pray for you. Okay, no, I know, I know yours, but I want to pray because the Lord is saying there is a covenant that he had with your father that he wants to put upon you there is a grace there was an understanding that God had with your father and even though he may have gone there is something I'm talking about a father that feared God to, what when did your father go to be with the Lord last two, last Monday sir huh? uh, two weeks ago. two weeks ago yes sir what was he doing sorry to ask a pastor sir he was a pastor yes sir. I want to pray for you Please start, my friend. Look at me, my friend. You believe in God? Yes, sir. <laughs> Where are you from? From Ogun State. Huh? From Ogun State. Ogun State. Yes, sir. Father, 
the covenant you had with his father in the name of Jesus that you seek to make available in his life I'm praying for you my friend you may look ordinary but there are things that your father had as an agreement with God don't ask the question how it came I release that grace this is an instruction that God is giving and I declare I speak over your life you will find yourself walking in the possibilities of that man and what he could not do the Lord empowers you to begin to do it in the name of Jesus Christ get ready to sing that song where's the guy who led that song that my get ready to sing what you sang that the special song again please I want him to be the one to sing it find a comfortable key for him and all the people who backed up I do these things by the spirit you see an apostolic ministry can be very strange sometimes no matter how organized you are when God decides to flow it's important to walk with him I'm seeing a woman by my right near where visitors sit there is the hand of God coming and the Lord is saying it is your season I don't know who that person is where the international guest sits just around my right in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you I don't know who you are but the Lord is saying I should tell you that your season has come he's bringing you into a prophetic season of your life and in the name of Jesus this grace will start speaking for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ listen we are organized people but there are times when the water is stirred you must discern what God is doing in five minutes you can receive something are we together five minutes I'm seeing transcorp who works there or who is connected anything connected to trans transcorp now I'm sure that is the um, that that hotel also transcorp I just saw the name and the logo who is that person what are you doing there first let me what what do you do there huh I didn't get it, my dear. Flourish. Florist. I'm not sure. Flowers. Oh, you okay. do flowers. Yeah. You too? Chef. Oh, you're a chef there? Yes. Hmm. I want to pray for you. Listen to me. The person you will meet may be a Cyrus, but don't be afraid. God will use him to lift you. This person I'm seeing is not a Christian, yet he has a compassionate heart. Not everybody is a devil. Please, if you are not there, if you are not working in Transcorp or have anything, you work there, you are sure? Yes, sir. So that we don't tell lies, this is the house of God. There must be discipline in the house of God. Hallelujah. The lady in the middle, you are the one who is the chef. I stretch my hands over you. Find favor now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I place a grace upon you as I'm speaking. In the name of Jesus, may that grace connect that you to that man as a destiny helper. God will use that man and change your life in a way that will surprise you. In the name of Jesus, what do you do, my dear? Waitress. You're a waitress, dear. Yes. I want to pray for you. Hmm. Ah, God, I fear you all. It's God. There are things that God does and he causes men to fear him. My dear... I'm laying hands on you, but it's somebody at the back who is shouting, and I'm wondering why that is happening. I'm laying my hands on you. A grace is coming upon you. I'm stretching my hands towards you. You are going to experience what people have been calling here, called disgrace, called favor. I stretch my hands upon you, my dear, in the name of Jesus, the Christ of the living God. Receive that grace. The waitress in the name of Jesus Christ and for all of you who are here the lady the florist and then the other one I saw the look the name and the logo of Transcorp and I'm just responding as God you see that every service is a miracle service God just knows that your heart is open and then you are ready to receive it in the name of Jesus for the remaining two I stretch my hands towards you and I'm praying by the power of the Holy Spirit because God has singled you out by his spirit may he honor you Amen. that which you desire as consistent with his will I declare that he will program men and cause them to visit you in the name of Jesus Christ Katsina state government somebody is receiving a favor 
with that government katsina state government i don't know who that person is but i'm speaking to you by the spirit you may not even be have any connection now as at when i'm speaking katsina state government katsina is a state in the northern part of nigeria i decree and declare by the spirit of the living god may that connection happen for you now may that connection happen for you now you saw me in your dream and I handed you a, a, like a paper, something that looked like an employment letter. The Lord is saying I should speak over that person. You don't have to come out. I can presume that many people may have seen this. When you see me in your dream, it's not really me. You understand? When you see me, it's just God using the face of a man of God you honor or who has the dimension to supply the grace that you desire. That's just what it means. Are we together? So it's not some idol worship or whatever it is. But I handed over something to you that looked like a paper. It's something pertaining to your employment. You've been trusting God for a job. I decree in Jesus' name. This is the week when my God will sort you out finally. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is someone you've started having pain. Severe pain around your left this is my left i'm feeling that same pain the left side of your limbs very very severe pain when you wake up in the morning sometimes you have to lift your left leg very slowly because of the pain that you're having in jesus name i'm praying for you right now every demonic thing that has been fired to your body as it came let it return back to the devil as it came let it return back to the devil Hallelujah. Jemima. Is it Jemima? Jemima. Jemima also. I hope I'm not wasting your time. My apologies. Eh? Please, just, just let me do this. Jemima. Who is that? Allow her, come. Don't shout, eh? just come and believe. Re release your faith. Don't, I know you are excited. It's a wonderful thing. When God locates you, don't, don't laugh at them. People have serious problems. The house of God is not a cinema center. God is solving serious problems in people's lives. Some of them, they are death and life problems. Hallelujah. Jemima. God told you I will call you. Who did God tell? In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare right now, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, I decree that this, I'm seeing the person surrounded by what looks like fire and you are never allowed to cross it. You can just move around but not walk out of it. And the Lord is saying, I should speak that that person goes forward. Jemima, in the name of Jesus, whatever has stood as a blockade, I release you prophetically. Let grace come on you. Go forward now. Go forward now. Go forward now. Go forward now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, go forward now. There are two preachers here. Today and Wednesday will be two prophetic days in your life. There is a divine visitation that God is bringing. There is an anointing two preachers. Not just our leaders here, I know that people will receive, but there are two preachers. You came here with hunger. God instructed you to come. There is something he told you, you will receive. I decree and declare, wherever those people are, there might be many, but there are two preachers. You don't have to come out. I stretch my hands. Let the power of God rest upon you wherever you are. And birth supernatural prophetic encounters today and Wednesday in the name of Jesus Christ God bless you Jemima the Lord visit you in Jesus name please don't be tired of me let me speak over someone there is someone here you walk in I'm seeing I'm seeing a uniformed place either maybe custom civil defense or immigration I know I'm seeing their kind of uniform 
um, from my vision, whether custom, civil defense, immigration, in the name of Jesus, I want to pray for you because I'm seeing that there is a posting about to be done and God is saying I should speak over you that favor be shown to you wherever you are you don't have to come out in the name of Jesus where you where do you walk huh I'm seeing that brown cap on your head where do you walk immigration just carry the lady gently if she's under the anointing you just keep them my friend I use you as a point of contact to every other person because I'm seeing for someone I will pray for you but the person I'm seeing there is a posting that is coming and you have been praying God will do something through that posting that will surprise you this is something that humanly speaking it can be you but God is saying I should declare he wants to show you what the power of God can do in the life of man he says all oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus where do you walk my dear the lady standing there huh road safety no problem you don't have to come out the three of them that are here you just come and stand I will use three of you as a point of contact to the rest my goodness I've not even touched the force of wisdom father in the name of Jesus I am praying grant favor I use this ones as a point of contact to all those who are paramilitary all those who are diplomatic people and professionals in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit let grace rest upon you that as this posting comes may my God sort you out in a way that will surprise you in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ you make clothes the hand of God is coming upon you now you don't have to come out the hand of God is coming upon you the grace to dress kings is coming upon you the Lord is saying I've hearkened unto your prayer I'm releasing grace upon you you make clothes this is what I'm seeing I release that grace upon you in the name of Jesus I release that grace upon you within the auditorium the overflow right to Zaria and our global family in the name of Jesus let new opportunities be open to you by the Spirit of God be open to you by the Spirit of God I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing out for joy. I will sing of the wonders of your word. And I will forever sing your praise. Lord, I will sing of the wonders of your word i will see how for joy i will see of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise please sit down let me introduce number two and then we'll close we may not have the time to touch it mark 6 2 the force of wisdom mark 6 2 mark 6 2 when the Sabbath the Sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from when had this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given to him take note not wisdom that he acquired what wisdom is this which is given to him and even such mighty works are wrought through his hands the bible tells us that wisdom can come as a gift from god there is the gift of wisdom there is the spirit of wisdom there is wisdom from above james 1 5 
if any of you lack wisdom the bible says let him ask of god that giveth unto all men liberally and upbraideth not and the bible says and it shall be given him please look at me it is impossible for you to command greater works in your life if you do not have the manifestation of wisdom hallelujah the first force prayer birthing and establishing the will and the purposes of God the second force that brings individuals into the reality the experience of greater works is the force of wisdom in Isaiah 11 and verse 2 the Bible talks about several dimensions of the Spirit and the second category after the Spirit of the Lord is the Spirit of wisdom and alongside with it understanding let's define wisdom number one wisdom I wrote here is the accurate application of spiritual knowledge wisdom is the accurate application of spiritual knowledge number two wisdom is the supernatural ability please write only introducing it and then we pray the supernatural ability please help her one two three help them It comes to an end, said the Spirit of God. It comes to an end. What God is saying to one, he's saying to all, it comes to an end. I don't know the situation in their lives. It comes to an end. Let me pray for someone. The haziness in your discernment. The, I want to release a grace upon you. The ability to discern spiritual things with precision. Beyond the realm of trial and error and luck, may that grace rest upon you now. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can train your spirit man to be sensitive to the impulses of the spirit. Hallelujah. There are radar technologies that are built around cars, certain cars. And once, once there is something with precision, the military have mastered the art of they can surround an entire space an airspace land space such that anything that intrudes beeps immediately your spirit man can be like that that you can receive impulses of the spirit there are things you don't fake one of them is discernment hallelujah you can't gather in the midst of god's people and make a fool of yourself before the nations there is a confidence that is derived by training your spirit man. Please sit down. Let's finish this definition. Koinonia tonight is interesting. Glory be to Jesus. The supernatural ability, please write. The second definition of wisdom. The supernatural ability to use the written and inspired word. The supernatural ability to use the written an inspired word of God to make accurate decisions the supernatural ability to use the written and the inspired word of God to make accurate decisions and provide solutions to life's problems is called wisdom I'll repeat myself one last time the supernatural ability to use the written word and the inspired word of God to make accurate decisions and to provide solutions to life's problems is called wisdom. Many people lack this faculty, the ability to take advantage of the written and inspired word of God to make quality decisions. I have done a few teachings here on wisdom to guide you. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not know anybody who did and is doing or will do mighty things, mighty works for the kingdom 
who does not have a rich deposit of wisdom upon his life because decisions decide destiny your destiny moves at the frequency of your decisions i have taught you here that you do not choose consequences you make decisions and connected to every decision are already consequences by default you know you are bankrupt of divine wisdom because your life becomes a plethora of errors and mistakes time wasting destiny consuming mistakes there are people whose lives are full of regrets they love the lord but they, their lives seem to revolve around mistakes financial mistakes are we together family marital mistakes what else again spiritual mistakes ministerial mistakes your life is full of the wrong things and the wrong decisions there is the absence of wisdom there are four kinds of wisdom that the bible reveals four kinds four kinds of wisdom that are revealed according to james chapter 3 13 to 17. i'm not dwelling so much i'm just showing you as a potent force number one earthly wisdom the bible talks about earthly wisdom hallelujah earthly wisdom this is natural wisdom we call it common sense even though a dear man of god says common sense is not common how right but then we know common sense instincts you may want to call it earthly wisdom the natural ability to respond to recognize and respond to right and wrong number two the bible calls it sensual wisdom from senses another word is scientific wisdom philosophical wisdom wisdom that comes through studies wisdom that comes through experience is called sensual wisdom all of these dimensions of wisdom are important but they have their limitations sensual wisdom comes through study comes through science comes through philosophy interacting with your sociological environment number three the third kind of wisdom is called devilish or demonic wisdom this is a sense of judgment a sense of recognizing right and wrong but it is motivated by your fraternity with evil or familiar spirits an example of this kind of wisdom was seen in the damsel i think in acts chapter 16 there was a damsel who was prophesying correctly all that she was saying was accurate and the bible says she kept prophesying to people and her masters had great gain by reason of her suit saying there was nothing wrong in what she was saying but the spirit that was behind it was the spirit of divination and when the apostles saw her haven't studied it for many days he saw that no this may be accurate but the spirit behind it was not of god and he rebuked the spirit out of the damn cell and that is how they landed themselves in the prison that eventually they prayed paul and silas remember that was the events that led them they casted the evil spirit out of that damn cell and the basis for their masters getting gain now went away completely that means when the spirit of god inspires you with wisdom it can bring you gain even financial gain hallelujah devilish wisdom there are people today who go to all kinds of demonic routes to try to know the future try to learn things about their lives you see that now of course we live in a world where everyone has the right to explore whatever path they choose to but I'm speaking to people who I believe love Jesus and are willing to submit their lives to the modus operandi of the kingdom. For such, you are prohibited by your love for Jesus and by the principles of scripture. The Bible says, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. It is important to know that God is a jealous God and his jealousy demands that he be the only God. John 17, 3, and this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. Devilish wisdom. And then finally, and for the purpose of our, the, the 
introduction tonight is called wisdom from above write this and it will be a good place to wrap up tonight's teaching wisdom from above the bible calls it godly supernatural wisdom wisdom from above listen to me ladies and gentlemen a man can receive wisdom from above wisdom beyond your age wisdom beyond your level of of um secular enlightenment and education wisdom beyond the scope of your experience in fact wisdom beyond your level of exposure all of these aforementioned are enhancers having them in your life provides a leverage and an advantage but nothing stands the wisdom that comes from above you want to live a life of greater works manifesting the superior power of god you can tell when a man is carrying wisdom wisdom from above qualitative superior decisions that move your life your organization your ministry god's people move nations forward wisdom always moves people forward making incremental steps many of us here have been stagnated across many areas of our lives because we have lacked this wisdom next week i'll take it from here but once you are seated lay your hands on your head in one minute and i'd like you to cry father the wisdom required to manifest greater works i receive it right now go ahead and pray the wisdom required the wisdom required your hands on your head as a prophetic action in the name of jesus the wisdom required i am tired of making destiny delaying decisions i am tired of making inferior decisions i obtain grace go ahead and pray there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death lord i am ready to make quality decisions it's time to move the work you have given me forward move my family forward move my destiny forward move my children forward move my spouse forward move my organization forward go ahead and pray pray in one minute wisdom that comes from above he said what wisdom is this go ahead as you are praying is coming on you as you are praying is coming on you and like solomon you will rise up from this prayer and watch your life begin to move at the frequency of divine wisdom
chapter 2 and verse 7 please rise everyone first Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 7 it says but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery then he says even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory I think it's Luke now who calls it, I'm not sure whether it's Luke 1, 17 or what scripture. He says the wisdom of the just. There is the wisdom of the just. Yeah. And the disobedience to turn them to the wisdom of the just. Among the many things that wisdom does, ladies and gentlemen, is to make stars out of ordinary men. Daniel 12, 3. And they that be wise shall shine. It doesn't matter what nation. It doesn't matter what place. They that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. Show me a man who has placed value on wisdom. I show you a man that can never remain down. Man of God, when wisdom comes upon you, your ministry will become a sign and a wonder businessman when wisdom comes upon you you will lay up gold as dust and you will be a wonder first to yourself and everybody around you but your greatest confidence will not be the money you have the greatest confidence will be the residue of wisdom one of the true riches the capital that buys money many believers have ignored wisdom Please do not miss next week's, um, especially for those following online. I've not done justice to wisdom. I need to show you what the force of wisdom can do. I submit to you with all humility that this ministry you celebrate around the globe, yes, it's a product of God's grace, but a dimension of his grace called wisdom. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. By me nobles rule. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. A man who has tapped into the fountain of divine wisdom is a mystery to all men. An eternal mystery. You will never unravel a destiny that has buried itself in the wisdom of God. That even the salvation of men was called the hidden wisdom of God. That which principalities and powers did not know. That had they known this, they would not crucify the king of glory. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you love favor. I know you have seen the immense benefits of favor. But let me encourage you. Our lives move at the frequency of decisions. And when you evolve to becoming a leader, there are many destinies connected to your, de to your, to your decisions. One wrong, careless, undiscerning assumption can recycle the pain of men. The burden of leadership is such that you need wisdom from above. Most of us here are professionals in different respects. And this is a house of influence where God has enabled great men to rise across different strata of society. I sell to you a key, a factor for greater works. It's called wisdom. Even wisdom that comes from above. Among the many things you contend for in this day is wisdom. And one of the secrets for accessing wisdom, let me give you two keys. I will repeat them next week. Listen to wise men and follow the book of wisdom. These are two profound keys to becoming wise. Listen to wise men. He that walks with the wise. So the Bible tells us proximity can impart wisdom. He who walks with the wise will be wise himself. Love everybody, but avoid the company of foolish people. Your destiny is too expensive for experiment. Are we together now? One mistake has cost you 10 years. Don't repeat another one. You don't have all that lifetime. One definition of a fool is a man who says in his heart, there is no God. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That means one definition of wisdom is one who submits himself to instruction. Are we learning? Yeah. 
very important listen to wise men listen to wise men everywhere you see if the fountain of wisdom flowing listen to it and then number two this book you see is a compendium of the wisdom of God written by holy men inspired by the spirit of wisdom holy men wrote the Bible says as they were inspired and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise even unto salvation father we thank you for tonight thank you for the abundance of your grace in the name of jesus i pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that the grace for prayer rests upon you the wisdom of the spirit rests upon you that by the revelation of these forces already your life will begin to command greater works greater results in the name of Jesus someone is saying tonight I need Jesus I have taught you that only a fool will say in his heart it's not an insult it's a description that there is no God someone is saying I came to church tonight and whilst I heard the man of God preach the spirit of the living God began to convict me that it is time to make my ways right with Jesus when you submit yourself to wisdom and to instruction you come to Jesus the fountain of wisdom you are here and you want to make that decision for a first time or you are rededicating your heart to Jesus Christ it doesn't matter what category I want you to courageously pick your bags your Bible everything you came to church with show that you have embraced wisdom tonight by coming to Jesus. Let's celebrate them as they come. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma. Come to Jesus. Let the devil be put to shame over your destiny tonight. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. It matters that we celebrate them as they come to Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for that courage. Come before Jesus. Are you coming? Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Come. Every man will bow down and say you are king. Let's give them a minute to come. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start. Thank you ladies and gentlemen for the courage Zari I believe that there are people who are walking up the altar all the overflows and our global family all those who are making it right with Jesus it's a noble decision to make it right with Jesus it's the first proof that you desire wisdom the first proof that you desire greater works please lift your right hand let me encourage you all of you who are here as a sign of total surrender to Jesus and say this after me loud and clear say Lord Jesus I have heard your word tonight I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King and I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life i am a child of god i go from glory to glory and grace to grace amen keep those beautiful hands lifted father thank you for my brothers and sisters all who have come declaring your lordship over their lives by the authority of scripture i declare your sins forgiven and i empower you in the name of jesus to live the victorious christian life I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and that from today henceforth you go forward ever and backward never 
in Jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed thank you very much for making this great decision please let me request that you move to my right which will be your left there are a group of counselors who will quickly have a word with you let's honor them as they go just one quick word and you are back to your seat keep clapping koinonia thank you hallelujah praise the name of the lord a final repeat on the announcement that we have our workers retreat all workers saturday please make sure you are here I understand it starts i think 8 30 or 9 please be sure that you are here heads of department do well to emphasize it to the workers and then on sunday we continue on our series greater works let me encourage you please do well two things number one go and listen to this message again i will listen to it again myself first for my edification and then as a general routine that improves my growth so you go back and listen to it don't assume you heard everything pray the prayers and who knows the worship team god grant you grace we need a lot of sounds coming from you so that we continue to use them as pointers and enhancers to our worship and prayer remember the assignment i gave everybody find a day this week where you dedicate quality time i leave it up to you to choose how many hours but you can do that with your family you can do that with your children do that with all who can agree with you you can just take some time to pray and settle certain things your emphasis is birthing the purposes of god in your life and disallowing anything that is inconsistent with the will of god have you been blessed tonight please rise for a final blessing may the lord bless you in the name of jesus may the hand of god rest upon you this week beginning let it be a week of greater works in the name of jesus you will return next week with mighty testimonies everything that is not the will of god is not permitted to come near you this week in the name of jesus you are a sign and a wonder you are blessed and you are lifted go from glory to glory in jesus name i pray after the grace do well to hug and greet one another on your way out let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercies will follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you and see you on sunday hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you